Hi guys. I hope everybody's having a great Saturday. We are still in the midst of uh, yet another winter storm. <laughs> it's April in the Maritimes, so we're kind of accustomed to having these weird swings in weather, but um, the snow started on Wednesday and it is still snowing. And then we had freezing rain and then we had snow and then we had freezing rain. And it's been back and forth steadily all week since Wednesday, Wednesday evening. And um, we're still getting snow and freezing rain mix today. So everything is just crawling around here. It's just been a misery. And of course, it's damp and humid. And you can tell <laughs> because the hair has a mind of its own. It is very curly right now. I had to beat it into submission this morning. And it's still five minutes later. Poof. So I have some fun stuff today. We're going to be painting uh, Kindness is as Honey. Uh, on that small tag. I love this piece. I like it in the larger half circle in particular. I just think it's a very pretty piece. And it's a really fun technique to paint those flowers. Because of the method I'm using to paint them, they're going to have sort of that slightly translucent quality, which is a lot of fun. And it's easy to achieve. It just takes a little bit of patience. So we're going to be painting that. And uh, I really enjoy this piece because it involves some of my favorite things. And, um, and on top of that, we have some really nice giveaways this week. We have a, a beautiful set of stencils from M Square. So there's a set of four stencils. Uh, plus, we've got some brushes from Dynasty Brush. And we have a few other little goodies in there from Tombow. So we have three of those to give away today. And we'll do that towards the end. To get in on the giveaways, all you have to do is join in on the fun. Get involved in the chat, uh, either on YouTube or on Facebook. It doesn't matter which one. And then hit all the buttons. Hit the like button, hit the follow button, hit the subscribe button. You hit those buttons, your name goes on the list. And uh, at the end of the live, we are going to spin that wheel and three of you will win one of those prize packs. And th today they're worth about $35 US, which is a nice little giveaway. So I'm rather happy about that. So we're having a little bit of fun with stencils. Um, I had a bunch of uh, surfaces arrive yesterday. So we worked like madmen here to get everything packaged because <laughs> it was a lot. So we get surfaces galore in. Website has been updated. So if you're looking for a specific kit or a specific surface and it shows that it's not available, don't worry. Give us a few minutes. Um, we can make sure that it gets updated. We do have everything in stock. So uh, we've been, it's been a busy week. Um, and if you haven't noticed, um, I did post a, a new free printable in the free download section on my website. Um, it's called Ho 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 Printable, which is a cute one. I have no idea why I suddenly felt the need to paint something Christmassy. It might have had something to do with all this snow. So it seems to me we've gotten more snow or had more snow days in the last four days than we've had all winter. So makes for an interesting week. And the roads are a mess. Just slushy and wet and icy and just ew. It's just not nice weather. Not in April. So that has been our week thus far. Um, Renee is not with us today. He's actually monitoring um, from his uh, tablet or his phone upstairs. Um, because Miss Mays had surgery on Thursday and um, she's recovering from that. And because she's so high energy, <laughs> um, he has to make sure that she stays calm because she had, she had a spay. So um, she's a, a much, pretty much a live wire and she's very mouthy and very saucy. And so she's, you know, she doesn't do as she's told. <laughs> she will not just lay down and rest. So he has to make sure that she keeps fairly quiet so give her stitches in her abdomen a chance to heal uh, so he will probably pop into the chat and say howdy to everybody um, so if you're wondering where he is that's why so he is not here in the studio but he is looking after base um, even though she had major <laughs> surgery she is not by any stretch of the imagination settled down I can tell you that she has been a bit of a live wire so today we're going to be painting Kindness is as Honey. This one is fun. It's easy to do. And I really like the, the little challenge of getting those translucent flowers. So if you guys are ready to get started on that, so am I.
Oh, look at that. I managed to do that fairly seamlessly. <laughs> Renee will likely have something to say about it, but <laughs> managed to do it myself. Um, he set me up with a little stream deck so I can switch cameras at will. Um, so it's fairly easy. So this is the piece that we're painting. I love the translucent look of these flowers. They're a little bit soft. They don't look solid white. They're not heavy. Um, and they're really not a difficult paint. You just sort of have to accept the fact that in the beginning they're going to be a little wishy-washy. But they will get there. I promise you. So this is the surface that I'm working on. I really love this surface. Um, this is the rustic tag. This one is a four and a half by ten inches. I love this one. I love the shape of it. I think just because it's not perfect, I think that that appeals to me. I have to adjust a camera. Oh, do you? <laughs> he's going to adjust a camera. <laughs> you can tell he's monitoring. Um, I really do like this one. Um, my pal Deb made this one for me, and. Um, and I got some new ones in that you guys are going to love. Um, they're the smaller Christmas ornament version. So, of course, I've got Christmas ornaments on the brain for some unknown reason. You would think, with it being April, that I, my brain would be on flowers and spring stuff. But it really isn't. <laughs> so, so, this is the stencil I'm going to use for this background. I've got one coat of Deep Midnight Blue really like this blue it's a slightly grayed out nice deep tone I've got one coat on I brushed it on vertically so if any brush marks and and you know thin areas in the paint are running vertically instead of just you know every which way now the color that I'm going to stencil with is this one it's cobblestone I like this much better for this type of an effect because um, it's not as harsh a contrast. If it's too harsh a contrast, it just doesn't work. Now, I'm going to turn my stencil just slightly to the side. And I'm going to load up my stencil brush with cobblestone. I'm going to blot it a little bit on some paper towel. And we are not looking for perfection. We are not looking for fully opaque. I just want to get a little color on there. So don't be too heavy handed. Just get a little color on. So it's going to look like that at first, but it's not fully opaque. And you're going to let that color run out. Don't worry about getting it perfect. Some of these um, honeycomb don't even have to be complete. We just want to get them on the surface. And I'm going to bring them down to about the halfway mark. I don't want to cover the whole surface. There's no point. And again, I'm not worried about getting them perfect. I'm going to do one little one more little row here just make sure they're lined up here we go just like that so neatness doesn't really count for this you just want them to be there that's essentially it so I have a small sanding sponge you can use the sanding disc a piece of sandpaper a piece of brown paper whatever you have on hand and you're going to sand this vertically. And I don't think this is going to be enough. I'm going to have to really sand this. I got it on a little too heavy. So I want to distress these quite a bit. And I have a damp sponge here. wipe off that dust and I'm going to dry this I'm going to sand it one more time I want this a little lighter and if I can't get it as light as I want without sanding everything off 
I have another little trick. There we go. I want this to be fairly light, but I don't think that that's going to cut it. So I'm going to take a little bit of that base color, that deep midnight blue. <laughs> and I'm going to brush a little of that over top. Opening my mail now. <laughs> Amazon delivery. <laughs> okay. So I got my husband's birthday was on Thursday. Thank you everybody for the happy birthdays for for Chuck. Um and I ordered him a silly little thing to put in his garage. Renee just opened it. <laughs> and it, it looks a little um, worse for wear. It got rather bent. Did they try to fold it to put it in the mailbox? Or anyway, this is grumpy old Harley Davidson. Owner lives here, so <laughs> that'll make him happy. So that little wash of that deep midnight blue over top of it subdued it enough, I think. I just didn't don't want these glaring out at me. So I'll make sure everything is good and dry. Bit of nice. And now we're going to give the edges a little bit of color and see if I can actually see the chat. Okay, am I not seeing the chat? There it is. Hello, Elsie and Thanette and Linda Morgan and Donna Baker and Kim... <laughs> I couldn't see the chat for a moment, guys. And Christine Hairstone. So I'm gonna grab my, I need a nice angled shader. So I'm gonna use a faux squirrel. And I've got a little bit of uh, Prussian blue. I wanted a really dark value of blue for this. And I'm going to put a float of it along the outside edge of the tag. There we go. There we are. I really like the blue at the outside edge. Just gives the edges a little more depth. And it sets that stencil design back just a little bit. There we go. So, gives us a nice little aged edge, a little more depth. And I like to round out the corners a little bit so that I got nice dark corners. I do that on most surfaces. I, I just like the idea of having a darker frame and a lighter area in the middle. It just seems to work well. <clears throat> and pardon me if my, I know I'm still sounding a little bit um, congested. It's, I still have a stuffy nose, stuffy sinus, and a, and a little bit of a cough, and it's just sort of hanging on. Yes, Denise, I'm using a half-inch angle. 
That tends to be my go-to, half inch or three eighths. Those are the ones I tend to gravitate towards, unless it's a really large surface and then I'll go to a three quarter or a one inch. But most of the time I'm using a half inch or a three eighths. That tends to be my, my go-to. So we have nice dark edge out at the top. I, I didn't really worry about it so much at the bottom because we're gonna be shading down there anyway, but kind of wanted to get that going up there. So I've got my line drawing. This drives me absolutely bananas that um, my line drawing in the pattern is actually smaller than the surface. We are still having issues with this new computer um, scanning to actual size and we haven't figured out what the problem is yet. Um, we thought we had it but uh, it's still, haven't figured it out. I can get it to work on some and not on others. And for some unknown reason, this is the one it decides not to work. <laughs> so what I'm doing, I'm going to pull the line drawing down to the bottom of this surface. And then I'm going to push it over to the left so that that line drawing is actually on the edge and along the bottom of the surface. It drives me bananas that this does not want to scan in the right size. And of course we don't see that until the PDF is complete and then we have to redo it. And I thought we had it. We had a process and when I went to print off the pattern today I discovered that it's not the right size. And so I had to enlarge my line drawing and it's still not the right size, so it's driving me bananas. If I really don't like enlarging anything, I prefer to have actual size. That's my preference. So I'm using white graphite, and I made sure that I have it the right way down. Hi, Karen. How you doing, sweetie? So this is the fun part. For me, it is anyway. I don't know. But some people don't like the tracing part. I like it. Um, just you can actually create a few things in there that also adjust things accordingly. If you're not happy with a particular line drawing, you can make whatever changes changes you want. So I have been playing with the new decor colors for the last couple of weeks. They are, is this one a kit? Um, I think we did it as a kit. I'd have to check, but we can put one up. That's not a problem. If you want it as a kit, we can do it as a kit. This is just, I love these flowers. These flowers are so pretty. Not one I had, had done before or had done in the past and I just thought it would make a nice change. And this one is actually a fairly simple paint. I know it looks complex, but they're really not as difficult as you might think. Sandy paints these quite frequently and she does them. They're just so beautiful when she paints them. <laughs> so we have fleurs. Now, when um, we were putting this surface together, we do include the bee. We have a bee in that surface set. 
so that you have, if you want to use the dimensional B, you certainly can, but um, if you don't, that's fine too. You can use the B for something else if you want to. I got a bunch of really nifty surfaces in this week. Fully restocked on all the postage stamps in all sizes. We have them in the 4x4s, the 6x6, the um, 8x8s, and in the 8x10. I've been so excited about them. I love that surface. I don't know what it is. That postage stamp thing is probably because I have that thing for the cancellation stamp. I'm just obsessed with that too. So, so there is our honeycomb. And I'm going to trace out my bee. I'm going to paint my bee on today. Um, although the kit comes with a dimensional bee, a little laser cut bee. Um, I'm going to paint this on today. The painting process is exactly the same, whether you use the dimensional B or if you're painting it directly onto the surface, it doesn't matter. It's the same process. And then we have our lettering. Now I'm going to simplify the lettering. You can do the lettering with a brush, a liner, um, but I'm going to show you a fun way to do it. I've been playing a lot with the um, the Posca pens and I got a set of the extra fine Posca pens recently and I've been having way too much fun with those. I love how quickly they dry. They're just fabulous. And they're so quick and so easy. So this piece is, or I should say this pattern is included in the pattern for the, the half inch or the, the half 12 inch circle. Um, and I just love, there we go. I think I have everything. And voila, look at that. Okay, I'm just double check, make sure I got everything where it's supposed to be. And I think I'm good. Now let's see if I've... <laughs> I love that, They're painting those little bees and, and putting a magnet on them. They're just, that's a fabulous idea. I got a new phone this week. My cell phone, the screen, decided to pack it in this week. Um, and it started doing really strange things the last few weeks, and the touch screen was going. And it really shouldn't have. It's a, practically a brand new phone. So I ended up uh, calling my provider, and they replaced my phone, which was nice. We sat down and discussed which one I was going to do. and So I got the new iPhone 15. Oh my good Lord. Well, it has a whole bunch of things on it that the other phone did not. And um, it, it has been a little bit of a learning curve. Even for me, I have always had an iPhone. And um, this one has been a bit of a learning curve. And so I haven't been able to access certain things until I'm still trying to get the texting sorted out. So if, uh, if you're waiting for a response <laughs> um, to a message... Um, Please bear with me because the uh, some of the messages just go straight through to my phone. <laughs> so I don't have access to a lot of them just at the moment. So they're just giving me gears. What is the best brand of graphite to use? Well, to be perfectly honest, a lot of that has to do with personal preference. However, having said that... Um, Decor used to make one that I, I absolutely loved, but the uh, uh, Lil Cornell, not Lil Cornell, oh my goodness. Uh, now I can't, my brain shut off again. Good Lord. Royal, sorry, Royal Langnickel. Oh my God, Lord have mercy. 
Um, Royal Langnickel actually makes a really good one. Um, I like that one. And Sorrel makes a very good one. I, I really prefer to have one that does not have wax in it. Hi, Linda. Because if it has wax in it, the paint doesn't want to stick. And oh, it's just a pain. And then they're hard to get off. They smear and they do all weird and wonderful things. So, so we're going to start by shading around our line drawing. And I'm doing that with a little bit of Prussian blue. And you're going to shade right up to the edge and around those flowers. Notice I'm not really worrying too much about, you know, being perfectly, if it goes over top of that, it's okay. You know, the world's not going to end because your float went over top of your line drawing. And I'll be honest, if you're not worrying about it, it tends to work, work much better. So I'm just going to soften the edge of that a little bit. Look at that. And then I'm going to dry that. We don't need an absolutely perfect float. We just need to get a little bit of depth back there. That's all. So it's just a little darker. Now, the color that I used for the honeycomb is one of the new colors. It's uh, salted caramel. I'm really liking that color a lot. A lot. <laughs> I've been using it a lot lately. I have used Mona Lisa's graphite. It's pretty good. Hi, Jan! And Crystal Hendricks. Crystal, I'm so glad that you're feeling a little bit better. And hopefully you're feeling 100% really soon. So yeah, the the honeycomb, I use this salted caramel. I really like this color. I um I know that because I've already had to go looking for um for more because <laughs> this one's almost empty. Um the same with the um the baby duck. That one's almost empty. And uh so is the blue. <laughs> so I'm just yeah, going through this these new colors very quickly. I'm very much in love with this color. So we're going to use, for the flowers, we're going to use warm white. And when I said that the, these flowers are going to look a little translucent, they are because we're not going to be using a fully opaque, opaque base coat for these. So I'm going to put a little bit of warm white on my palette. And you can see my warm whites. And I'm going to use a round. I'm using a number five. This is a Dynasty Black Gold round. I'm using a number five. And I'm going to use a little bit of my Joe Sonia's for this. And we're going to thin out some of that paint. Like so. You want it fairly milky. There we go. So it is quite thin. And when you're applying this white, you're going to pull it, follow the shape of the petals. So you're going to pull back towards the center of the flower like that. And it is going to look a little streaky and that's okay. And that color is very transparent. You're going to see that blue right through it. It's going to make that white look a little bit gray. And that's all right, don't panic. And I try to leave at least a little gap between each of those segments so that you you don't lose the shape of the petal. And and you'll know where you can float and there we go. Now 
So it is a little watery and it is not going to be fully opaque. So when you see it and it looks a little transparent, you're good to go. Don't worry. And all of those other little flip overs and whatnot, don't worry about those just yet. So you see how I'm pulling the color to shape the petal. Those vertical lines are going to work in your favor. All those little strokes that you've got in there are going to work, make it easier for you in the end. So these flowers are not going to be bright white. We're going to use that bl dark blue underneath it to our advantage. Instead of fighting against it, we're going to make it work for us. It's one of those, if you can't beat it, join it things. You might as well make it work for you. If you're not going to be able to fight it, make it work for you. And you see we've got little flip overs and whatnot in those petals. Don't worry about those just yet. The trick is to do them all in one stroke so that those petals, you make all of that, those stroke marks, all of those brush marks work in your favor. And then you don't have these little stop and start marks everywhere. Easy peasy. I know I've had <laughs> people say, like, how can you paint something without actually giving it a fully opaque base coat? And I think part of it is just understanding that it isn't necessary a lot of the time, especially in a case like this to use a fully opaque base coat because we have several other colors going over top of it. And if we start thinking about the background as being part of that base coat, um, it becomes less intimidating. So just a little, little extra here. This one's a little thin. There we go. So we have our first coat of white in there. Now, when it comes to putting other colors on top of this, um, we're going to be using bubblegum pink. We're going to be using a schvaltum. We're going to be using titanium white, lamp black. So we have a whole raft of other colors to go on top of this in order to get to where we're going. So you don't need to have it all done in one shot. So I'm going to grab our leaf color, which is a little bit of that antique green, which is... I think one of my favorite greens. You can use lush green if you don't have antique. And vice versa, if you don't have lush green, you can use antique green. And again, I'm not overly concerned about getting a fully opaque base coat with my leaves either. And I base coat my leaves with one coat of antique green. I love antique green. I just think it's such a lush green. It's got just, it works so well with so many other things too, which is nice. So, and again, we're letting that blue do some of the work for us. 
So, yep, one coat antique green. Oh, and I missed a spot. I gotta go and pop, pop that in because heaven forbid. I missed a leaf right there. Now, there is a petal over here. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that warm weight and I'm going to paint in that petal a little bit. It's just a little. There is a flower off there. It just keeps things from looking too static. Like they were just glued on. I'm going to dry this real quick and see if I've missed anyone. <laughs> Avocado will work just fine. Oh my goodness. Everybody's... Everybody is ready for the eclipse on Monday. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for the weirdness to begin. <laughs> I have absolutely no doubt there's going to be some weirdness. Uh, we're supposedly going to be in for an absolutely stellar sunshiny day on Monday. So that will be interesting. Now, I'm going to put a base coat of that salted caramel on my uh, honeycomb. And I think I, I made a couple of people crazy with, with this recently the way I paint this um, we're always so worried about whether or not things are you know perfectly base coated I make use of those little spaces and gaps that it creates when you paint loosely like this they can and often do work in your favor so I don't really concern myself too much. In the end, I just find it creates a softer look. But that's how I like to paint. I like it to look soft. That doesn't mean it has to be badly painted. There we go. Look at that. And then I'll come over here and I'll round out those little bits on the side. There we go. Easy peasy. So I've got my base coat on. Like I said, I'm not too, I'm not worrying overly about some of the minutia. That'll take care of itself as we go. Those are little things that we will clean up as we go. So we have our honeycomb is base coated. I'm going to switch to a rigger. We're going to base coat our berries. This is about the only one that I'm really base coating solid is these berries. And even that I'm not, I'm not really worrying about it too much. One coat of warm white is sufficient. We are going to be shading and highlighting it so it will take on more of an opaque look as it goes. It doesn't take me very long. I do paint fast, but part of that is just because I'm so used to doing my own thing with this that I don't really worry too much about all of those things. I'm familiar with how I paint. <laughs> so I'm going to put a coat of white 
on the fuzzy butt of our bumblebee. And then I'm going to paint the wings as well. Now those wings can be one coat. I don't, we're not gonna putz with them too much. Here we go. How can you not love a fuzzy butt bumblebee? I mean, really. So if you're painting um, the dimensional bee for this, the process is exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the size of the bee. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it. Liz and Dorothy. Hello. I'm trying to keep my eye on the chat and paint at the same time. It's not working well. <laughs> yes, the rigor that I'm using is a zero. The two that I use the most often are either a zero or a two. Those are the two sizes that I use the most. So we have all of our base coats in. Everything appears to be pretty dry. So let's start with our little bumblebee and get him. I love these little bees. I love bees in general. I have a weakness for bees. So I'm gonna use a little bit of sunny day and I'm going to base coat his fuzzy little butt with one coat of that sunny day which is why I used a coat of white first. Um, because if I put that sunny day right over that dark blue, I'm gonna end up with a kind of green looking butt that's gonna take like five coats. Don't really want that. So we want a nice bright yellow butt. And we're going to use a little bit of um, orange flame, which is my favorite orange. And I've been experimenting with some of the new colors and I'm in love with tea berry. Love that color. So, and we need a little bit of Bahama blue, of which I am out, if you can imagine it. I am out of Bahama blue. I don't know how that happened. I'm usually fully stocked, but um, I have had to substitute, and this is the one that I'm using uh, to substitute for Bahama Blue, is Crystal Blue. It's a pretty color. It's not quite the same as Bahama Blue. It's not as green, um, but it works. It will do the trick. So um, for the wings, you're going to bring that little bit of that crystal blue or Bahama blue in close to the body. Just on both wings, tight to the body, little float in there. And then I like to put a little float of it at the tip of the wing as well. I don't, it just gives the wings a little extra something. So little tip of that Bahama blue. Hi, Suzanne. So I will dry that. <laughs> so you have to decide which is going to be the sh highlight side and which is going to be the shaded side. 
Um, I initially did it on the top part, but I think for this little fellow, we're going to do it on the other side. So I'm going to put a float of that orange flame on one side. You can pick your side. It doesn't have to be the same side. Just a little float of orange flame on the belly, which would be abdomen. I'm going to dry that real quick. I love these little bees. Little bees are just fun. And then uh, I need a little bit of lamp black. Hello, son. Hello, mother. What can I do you out of? Um, just trying to get a question. Okay. Uh, Hi, what, baby. What is it you use in your water to help your paint move? Um, nothing. <laughs> the only thing I use is this. This is Joe Sonia's Fast Dry Glaze. And I use that instead of water when I paint. So I keep a little jar next to my brush stand or next to my palette and I dip into that and when I need to rinse my brush I put it in water but the rest of the time I'm floating shading highlighting thinning my paint I do it with this medium and I think I have a bottle handy that I can show you what it looks like this is it here this stuff is is my everything medium I use it for all sorts of things um, for thinning my paint a little for base coating smooth out my base coats for thinning my paint, for line work, for detail work, for floating, for shading, for highlighting. Um, I'll even use it as a glaze medium. Yep, come on. And um, <laughs> May says hi. <laughs> She's sassy today. She's sassy every day. What is a substitute for salted caramel? Uh, you know what? You can use honey brown. Honey brown will work just fine. Golden ochre, deep ochre, that'll work. So we've got a little bit of shading on it. I'm going to use a little bit of asphaltum. How do I not have asphaltum on my palette today? There we go. Little touch of asphaltum. It's my toning color. I use asphaltum for so many things. So I'm going to pick up just a little. I'm going to blend it out well. I don't want it full strength. And I'm going to tone that orange just a little. All it does is just subdue that color just a scooch. So that it's not screaming out at you. And then I've got a little bit of lamp black on my palette. I'm going to thin out a little of that. And you can use either a, a fine, a zero rigger, or you can use a liner brush. And you're just going to add some, some fuzzy butt stuff. Just a series of little choppy lines like so. And then down at the bottom, there's a little tail section there. And you want them far enough apart that it creates sort of a, a hairy look or a fuzzy look. You don't want a solid band. And then while you have the black, you're going to paint the thorax right here and the head. And this is also where I like to use the tip of my brush to put in the feet, little feet. They're just a series of little tiny dots. Now, obviously, if you're using the, the cutout bee, then you would just base coat them black. So I'm going to dry him. Fuzzy butt bumblebee. And then we're going to highlight this little guy. He's super easy. And Linda has asked to see a little closer, so I'm going to bring him up a little closer. 
He's pretty straightforward. He's not a complex little guy. And we are going to use a little bit of thinned warm white to add a highlight um, on that fuzzy butt. And all it is is a series of little fine lines of white that overlap the black and onto the yellow. Just a series, not too many. You don't want to bury the black, but we want to put a little highlight there nonetheless. And then I'm going to take my angled shader and I'm going to create a really thin warm white. And I'm going to put a float on the highlight side of the head, which is a little half circle. Just a little one like that. It's tiny, tiny little float. And then I'm going to leave a space and I'm going to do it again on the thorax so that it creates a little bit of dimension. Just a tiny float. I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit here so you can see it a bit more. There we go. So we have a nice little highlight on the thorax. And we'll dry that float and then we're going to add a little stroke of white or a little dot of white just to give him a little extra oomph. So there we go, little highlight. So we're gonna dry him again. And then I have a moderate obsession with my black gel pen. I wouldn't say it's an unhealthy relationship, but it's a close one. Let's call it that. Um, I love my gel pens. And I like the texture it creates on these little guys. So I use my gel pen to put just a scribbly little line around the outside edge of the wing. Just like so. Nothing fancy. doesn't have to be perfectly within the confines of it. It can go over it. I make it squiggly. And I'm going to do the same thing to both sides. And then I'm going to take my gel pen. I'm going to add that same squiggly outline to my B. A few little dots. And that's my B. He does not have to be complex or meticulously painted to be effective. So when this is completely dry, and that includes the gel pen, I'm going to use uh, a black eraser and remove all of that white graphite. I use a gel pen a lot, an awful lot. I really like how it looks, just gives everything a nice soft look. So now that we have our B done, I always like to have one little thing in there finished because it's just fun. It's like putting the eyes on your on your ornaments. Some people like to do the eyes right at the end. I like to do them right at the very beginning because I like to have them alive right at the beginning. So our next step is to shade these leaves. I like working from the back forward. So we're going to shade our leaves. I'm using a little bit of plantation pine. And I'm going to shade underneath. Boys so boys, this is just not dark enough today. There it is, okay. So that little bit of plantation pine shade underneath the petals so that it, the flowers overlap the leaves. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab my darker green, I think darker green. Plantation pine isn't cutting it for me today, so I'm gonna switch to a little bit of flat green. I usually use plantation, but it's just not cutting it today. 
There we go. And I want it to be nice and dark. Much better. Okay. So we get a nice little shadow to separate those leaves. And to make those flowers push forward. If you don't get a dark enough shadow, then they just look like they're stuck together and we want to lift those flowers forward. So I'm going to pull a little of that black green in there. And right there. And the trick to getting those nice floats, those smooth floats, is more in using the whole chisel edge of the brush and not just the tip. And I see painters do it all the time, where you have a tendency to roll the brush up onto its tip and you're just using the tip to move into the color. What gets that float to stay nice and smooth is using that whole chisel edge of the brush to lay that float in. So if you're painting away and your floats all look like little bars or little stripes, um, pay attention to how you're laying the brush in. If the whole brush is not on the surface, you're not using the whole brush. And then you're only using the tip, which means you're only getting a little bit of color out of the brush and onto your surface. So you work so hard to get a really good blend on your palette. So back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Load the brush up, walk it in so that you get a nice transition, a nice flow of color so that when you come in and you do this, so that whole chisel edge on the brush lays in, you get these really nice floats. Get that whole chisel edge on the surface. And you'll get nice smooth floats. I got one right there. Et voila. So we have some pretty nice shadows in there. So let's dry that and then we're ready to start putting in those highlights. Two things you need to do to get a really nice float. Make sure that you blend the brush really well both sides. And that's, it is very important. And what that means is when you're picking up color, you pick it up on the toe of the brush. And then you move the brush back like this. Most of us, I see us do it all the time, we do this. We're just sort of patting into the same puddle of paint like that. That only disperses paint on one side of the brush. So if you pick up paint and you brush down like this and move back and forth and back and forth using both sides of the brush, you get a much more even distribution of color and then your floats will be much better. You'll get smoother transitions from one color to the next. So I've got a pretty nice float on there. I'm going to rinse out my brush and we're going to do the same thing with our highlight color, which is Margarita, which is this high yellow green. 
If you don't have margarita, you can use either olive green, you can use matcha green, you can use sprout. Any one of those high yellow greens will work just fine for this. So I've got a little bit of Joe Sonia in my brush and a little tip load of margarita. Brush it back and forth, load it up really well. And we're going to highlight our leaves. And again, get that whole brush on the surface. That whole chisel edge on the surface of the brush, or the surface of the painting. Good grief. I can't talk today. My brain shuts off, does all sorts of weird and wonderful things. So I have not a lot of color in the brush. I don't think that it's necessary to have a ton of it in there. Especially since we're working over top of a fairly well base coated piece. So look at that. Nice soft highlights. Not a ton of color on the brush. Doesn't need to be. And again, I've got that whole chisel edge on the surface. You will find you do not need to float very much or have as much color. If you're using that whole chisel edge, you're going to get some really nice floats. Oh, it's good to know that I come after World's Men, Men's World's Curling. <laughs> you are Canadian. I'll give you the buy on that one. So, let me dry this real quick. And then we're going to come over to the um to crisping up those shadows and now you can do this with either the plantation pine or the black green whichever you have but this is just i use this to clean up little edges when you're floating sometimes you go over top of things you know some of the the uh, shaded areas get a little you know washed out or they lose their crispness just go back in with a little bit of your shading color on the center veins just to crisp things up a little bit if things have gotten a little washed out or maybe not as sharp as you would like them. Just go back in with a little float. Same with floating underneath the petals. Just gives everything a nice sharp look. Gives you those nice deep shadows in the center vein and underneath the edges of the petals. It just cleans everything up really nicely. And it doesn't take much, just a little bit. So from there, we're going to go over to these berries. And I used Bahama Blue to shade them initially. Of course, I don't have any Bahama Blue, so I'm gonna be using a little bit of that Crystal Blue. And I'm going to put a little shadow on these berries. And I'm coming in just slightly from the edge. They're not right on the edge of the white. They're just in slightly. So there's a little sliver of white showing. Just a little sliver. Don't want them too, too dark. There we go. So I'm going to dry those, and then we're going to float over top of that with a little bit of Eschwaltum. Oh, Elsie was multitasking. <laughs> you were watching curling on one and me on the other. It's so good to know where your priorities are. So 
I'm going to thin out a little ish Fulton. And I'm going to shade over top of that, that blue with a little bit of that Ashfaltum. And I'm letting that little sliver, do you see the little sliver? Maybe not. There we go. Little sliver of white showing. That's just going to help make our... <laughs> it's hard to see it on camera. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that straight white. You can use titanium white or warm white. And our highlight is going to go on the upper left, like so. So we have nice bright berries. So leaves are done. The berries are done. Our honeybee is done. So now we get to tackle those flowers. I love these. I love these. I just, they're so fun to paint. So I'm going to start with the center. I want to put some warm white right in the middle. In that round center portion, I want it nice and bright. It's going to be significantly brighter than the flower, which is what we want. Because we're going to put a yellow in there. You can use... Uh, that baby duck if you want to or you can use sunny day I'm using sunny day because it just happens to be close at hand so we have a little bit of warm white in there I keep losing the chat there it is I should do a honeybee sometime. <laughs> I love bees. What was that? Donna. Oh, you know, Donna, it behooves me to give people other alternatives simply because um, we don't all have access to an unlimited amount of colors. I, I'm in a very different position. Um, I have a full range of the Americana colors. I have every single color. Well, except Bahama Blue right now. That one's I'm out of. Um, so I can paint with whatever I want to. Not everybody has that luxury. And, you know, paint is either you either have to have it shipped. Most stores don't carry every color. So um, whenever I'm painting, I, I try to think of alternatives. I know what I like to use, but there's so many other colors out there that you can use in lieu of. So, and I encourage you to do it. If you don't have a color, look for something close. Close is close enough. That's my attitude. Close is close enough. So I've got a little bit of sunny day. We're going to base coat these centers with that bright yellow. I love this yellow. And again, I didn't want this yellow to be um, green, look green or anything. So I wanted to get a little bit of white in there to act as a barrier and to keep that yellow nice and bright. Uh, the other reason that I chose Sunny Day for the centers of these flowers was to carry the color palette from this B around through the piece. And if you'll notice that we're using, I used the same colors for the center all the way through that I used in the B so that those colors move around the surface. It helps draw the eye through the surface too. So I'm going to dry that. So fun. I'm going to make sure everything's dry before I tackle it. So our centers are going to get shaded just like the bee. With a little of that orange flame, that bright orange. It's a great color. And... 
See where the shadow on that bumblebee is? We're going to put it in the same place on the center of the flower. Just like that. Nice little float. Whole chisel edge on the surface. And it gives you such nice floats. You get these really great even floats. There we go. Oh, you know. <laughs> there are 285 colors in the deck wart line, and I have them all. <laughs> I can vouch for that. He can vouch for that. And I have multiples of many of them. <laughs> So shade and color for our flowers. I'm using bubblegum pink. I know. Seems really like an unlikely color. Is she sleeping? No. No. Of course not. Why would she do that? <laughs> um, Becca Buckner? Yes. Her brother passed away on April 1st. Oh no. Yeah. Is she on? Becca, I want to, Renee just told me, I didn't see your message on, uh, on YouTube. You have my deepest condolences, my dear. I am so sorry for your loss. And she has strep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, never rains, it pours. So I'm going to go in and separate all these petals and all of those little shaded areas with a float of bubblegum pink. So all of those little shaded areas on our flower get a float of bubblegum pink. We're going to float around the center of the flower as well. Just like that. So Neatness doesn't really count. We're going to float underneath there. It is a weak float. It does not a ton of color. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I do like to see it all the way around the center though. You want that little blush of color down in there. So that little blush of color at the center. Remember all of those little gaps and whatnot that are around the middle that you thought were going to look terrible because it looked so sloppy? Well, they're going to go away. And then we're going to float in those shadows. See, look at that. A little bit of pink. Look at that. So breezy. Now there's a turnover on this flower right here. You see this wonky bit right here? I like to put a little float of that pink right up against it, like so. Easy peasy. Get lots of water in that brush. Don't be afraid to get that color in there. Lots of water or glaze, either one. How fun is this? And get in behind that. Look at that. I missed a petal right there. There is a little, oh my goodness. I missed a petal. One of those little bits in there. Oopsie. So those little folds and whatnot that you see in the petal float right in there with that pink. Look at that.
So there's that pink, 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 pink. And this is what kind of keeps those flowers from looking a little cool. I want to warm them up a little bit with that bright pink. I love this color in there. It's just a nice little wash of color that just makes things pop a little bit. See, there's a fold there. Get that color in. A little bit out there. So we're just pulling in nice little washes of pink. Just keeps our flowers from looking flat and lifeless. There we go. I love bubblegum pink. I just think it's such a pretty, pretty color. Easy peasy. And I don't worry about whether or not the pinks are, you know, that every single float is the same color or the same value. At this point, I'm not worried about that. But I am, I just want everything to have that nice little pinkish tone. Because we're going to come back in, in just a second, with some titanium white. And here's, look at this. So pretty. Look at that. So now we've got nice glowing little flowers. Look how they glow right from the center. So pretty. So I'm going to dry this real quick. It's zip easy. And then I've got some titanium white. Put a little bit of that on my very messy palette, I might add. Good gravy marine. I've got color everywhere. <laughs> I'm always using a fast dry glaze. Always, always. Oh, Bonnie, I I have, when I say I've got every color, I've got every color. And if I'm out, then I have it ordered. <laughs> there are some colors that I have one of or two of. And then there's other colors where I have, you know, eight or ten of. Um, I have a whole bunch of this color, this crystal blue. Um, and I have a whole bunch of, of sea aqua, not sea aqua. Uh, aqua sky which is another one of those blues that I like to use a lot and uh, and none of the Bahama blue so I have no idea how I managed to have you know a dozen bottles of this but I don't have any Bahama blue it's ridiculous I should have Bahama blue <laughs> it's like my favorite color so I'm going to take a little bit of that titanium white and a little bit of fast dry or water and we're start going to start putting some highlights into our petals. And for me, this is fun. I, I just love how this punches up these flowers without making them very heavy. So on the highlight side, I'm putting in a little float of that white. Look what happens to those petals. All of that, see those little highlights just popping in? I'm going to come over here and do the same thing here. A little titanium white. So you can put it right at the edge of the petals. This is going to do wonders for this. 
So I'm coming out to the edge of the petal with a float of that titanium white. And it does two things. It crisps up all of the edges. Remember where they all started to look a little soft and a little furry and a little indistinct? This little float of titanium white is going to give you that nice crisp look. That nice finish that you were looking for. Look at that. And then this one where it overlaps, I'm going to float over top of that. And then down here. Everything is done in soft floats. Just let the colors do their job. Look at that. And they're still going to look a little squiffy for a minute. That little float of titanium white at the edges of these petals just makes everything a little crisper. And then that little stroke of white, it just keeps them from looking very heavy. They stay that very almost translucent. And I love that look. I love that they have this softness to them. And there's that bright white. And we're gonna have some fun in a second. So we have the highlights in. Still looking a little squiffy, but that's okay. We're going to take that titanium white. And I'm going to use the rigger. And remember, we have some flip overs to put in. And, oops, I got too much water. There we go. I'm going to paint in a couple of those little turnovers. We have a few of them. There's one here. And we have one here. And these are just those larger highlighted areas. I just want to make sure I got them all. Got one missing here. 
a little spot there that was missing something. Okay, so we've got those little flips in. So I'm going to dry this really well for our next little bit. We're going to come over here and work on our honeycomb. So the honeycomb is actually really easy to paint. I'm going to use a little bit of lamp black and we're going to paint in the opening in our B skep. It's not technically a honeycomb, it's called a skep. Honeycomb is what's inside it. This is called a B skep. So the members of my membership group are working on portraits this month. I think I scared them, scared them half to death. <laughs> so we've got our B skep. This is that um, salted caramel. I love this color. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to put another coat on. And I'm just over stroking where I laid in the color the first time. And I'm not really, I'm not really worrying too much about this. I'm just stroking in the color. And I'm starting on this edge because I want sort of a clean edge here. And so I'm letting the round brush do the bulk of the work. So just stroking in a little of that color. And again, you don't have to be too fussy with it. We're going to be layering in a bunch of other colors. So I just want to get a little more, a little more of a clean edge, I think is what I was looking for. So I've got salted caramel and I'm going to dry that we're going to make again make this work for us this little bee skip is an easy paint so we're going to add a shadow I'm going to use my 3 8 angle and a little bit of Joe Sonia's and Ashfaltum. And we're going to put a little float of Ashfaltum at the bottom of each of these rows. Nothing too fancy. Darkest value towards the bottom. And if you'll notice, I am not worrying too much about placement doesn't have to be perfect. I think we put far too much pressure on ourselves to get things absolutely perfect when it's got so many other steps to go yet. I just want to get, oops, that's a little dark, but a little float. And I'm, I'm using more of the tip and more of the chisel than the chisel on this one. So I just want to get sort of a line in there. Oops, that one's a little dark. It's okay, we'll move it around. So, little shadow. Again, don't don't beat yourself up if you can't get it perfect. Doesn't matter. So, I've got just enough to separate all of those areas. Nothing over the top. Easy peasy, right? 
So now we're going to do a little bit of a brush mix. I'm going to take this palette away for a second. I'll give myself a new one so that you can see what I'm doing. So we've got a little bit of that salted caramel and I've got a little bit of sunny day. And we're going to use these two colors to create our highlight. And then our shading color for this is a little bit of Eshfaltum. Ta-da! So I've got enough shadow in there to separate all of those little lines and we're going to make those work for us. So I'm going to take a little bit of our salted caramel. I'm going to pull a puddle out like this. And I'm going to pick up a little touch of the sunny day. And I'm going to mix that salted caramel with the sunny day and just make one or two values lighter. And then I'm going to overstroke my B scab, just coming in slightly from the edge on both sides. And I'm just stroking over each of those bars, those ridges in the base cap. Not perfect. They don't have to be. This one was not quite dry when I did this. There we go. So we have our little base cap. Then you're going to take that same sunny day and put it into that puddle. Same amount again. And you're going to make that little bit a little bit lighter. And you're going to come in from the edge of that first stroke. And you're going to come about two thirds. You see, not really worrying about whether or not it's perfect. Doesn't have to be. And each time I do this, it's getting a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to repeat that little more sunny day right into that last puddle you made. And we're going to dry this. So essentially we're going to use those two colors to gradually get it a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter until we get to where we want to be. So I've made a slightly lighter value and I've got it a little bit smaller. And I'm pulling it across. Look at that. Make it a little lighter still. And again, I'm not fussing or putzing with any of it. A little lighter again. Now I'm almost at the point where it's pure sunny day, almost, and that's where I'm going to stop. So I've got that highlight in. It's not a glaring white highlight. I don't want it to be. So I've got my highlight in, and by doing it that way where it's getting consecutively smaller, it enhances the appearance that this has got a curve to it. So I'm going to dry this and then we're going to shade our little bee skip. Make sure it's good and dry before we go on. And I missed a spot. I just saw that. I missed a spot. I forgot the highlight right there. On the top one. <laughs> Here we go. So I'm going to switch to a slightly bigger angled shader. I'm going to a half inch angle. This is a faux squirrel. I'll let it soak for a second because this one is dry. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of a shvaltum. And 
and we're going to shade this side of our B skip. Nice wide float. Look at that. And don't forget to come in down in here in behind that flower and under those leaves. They've got to get shaded too. And then we're going to put a smaller float on this side. Just a little one. Just like that. And this will give your bee skep some nice dimension. So if I dry that and then I'm going to deepen it with one more float. Just on in here. Underneath that flower and up that side. Give those flowers a nice little float. So look at that. We get nice dimension, nice shape. It rounds out our little bee skep really nicely. And it's an easy way to paint it if you just think of it in terms of every time that gets a little smaller, it's as if you shaded with multiple colors coming in, when in actual fact you just did it changing the value of the base color. Just a little. So I'm going to shade my flowers in behind using a little bit of eschfaltum. I love eschfaltum for this. We're going to separate our flowers a little bit with a little float of eschfaltum. And we're going to deepen those separations. I like my eschfaltum. And deepen those separations between the flowers and the petals. You do need that separation. And I'm doing it with just a little bit of a schvaltum. I'm keeping that mix fairly weak. I don't want it too strong because I don't want the flowers to be heavy. They need to maintain that lightness. So that little separation goes a long way. There we go. So we are ready to start adding all of the fun little details to this. And one of my favorites is doing the outlining for the leaves and the petals. And I do that with a little bit of my margarita which is that highlight green that we used for the leaves a little bit of warm white or titanium white either one we don't need a lot and let's start with the flowers i'm going to use a little bit of that warm white i'm going to thin it out really well I need it to be quite runny. Um, and we're just going to use a really irregular fine line around the edges of the petals. And on those highlights. I like soft details at the edges. This just sort of helps give the flower sort of a ruffled edge. I don't want it to be full strength white because then it becomes very heavy and hard edged. And I don't want that. So I'm just using heavily thinned, very fine lines, squiggly, imperfect. It just helps make the flower softer. I do the same thing to the leaves. We're going to do that with a mixture of that margarita and some warm white just to make it a little more opaque.
but it does make these flowers softer, prettier, a little more delicate. I don't want them to come off as being very hard edged. So. the lines off the center it just keeps them looking really delicate easy busy <laughs> so look how soft and translucent those flowers look so I'm going to take that same warm white I'm going to add a little bit of it to some of that margarita just to make it a slightly more opaque green and I'm going to thin that out with a little bit of Joe Sonia and this is where we add some fine lines. I like really soft, delicate, squiggly lines to the edges of my leaves. No hard edges, no straight lines, no, um, no harsh. That's a little much. But it gives you a chance to keep things nice and soft delicate looking and at the same time it still gives the leaves a little more dimension and it kind of makes them stand out a little bit which is nice and then of course I gotta have my I like my curly cues, my little vines and tendrils. Vines and tendrils are very important. They keep things looking soft. Here we go. So we have vines and tendrils. And now we're going to add a little more detail to our flowers. And I like doing that with my gel pen. And I'm using just a very faint scribbly line. And then at the center, we're going to put what almost looks like eyelashes around the center of this flower. And it's going to change directions. So each center gets these little faint lines around them with the gel pen. If you don't have the gel pen, you can do it with a fine liner. Um, I just find it so much simpler to do it with the pen. But as I said, if you don't have the gel pen, you can always do it with a liner brush. Just keep them as fine as possible so that you get this almost a hairy look, I guess is the word, like lashes. And they're going to come out about a quarter of an inch from the center of the flower. You don't want them to get too, too long and too, too heavy, but yeah, about a quarter of an inch. Comes up. What's up? Uh, Barb is saying my asphaltum on my flowers is too dark. How can I fix it? Um, you know what? Q-tip and a little bit of water and pull some of it off with a little bit. If you find that it's a little heavy-handed, float over it with a little bit of the base color. 
that you were shading over. And in a case like this, where you get that white, float a little white over it, a little bit of pink, and then try again. It's just paint. There's always a way to fix it. Thin, thin, thin. Your asphaltum has to be super thin. Okay, so I've got my little squigglies. Yep, super thin. So I'm just using that same squiggly line, very light, around the edges of my petals. Da -da -da -da. I have a thing about gel pens. I would just love how they, they just add an element to these. And I keep it light. It's not a hard edge. That's why it's squiggly. I find if you put a straight edge on something, it becomes very harsh. And I don't like harsh. It's, it needs to be soft and indistinct, and so it doesn't have to be perfect. I like scribbly. Scribbly works. And then once you've got that center done, <laughs> Maze is peeking through the cat door again. I'm going to get a little bit of lamp black. And we're going to add dip dots to the center, but only on those lashes. So nice little random dots out here. This maze is not happy. <laughs> Dad's home. Go bug Dad. Uh -huh. So little dip dots of lamp black. Out all the way around the center. Very random. I like to keep them small. I don't want to see them get too big and dark. So I'll put a little few all the way around. Like so. And then I'm going to add a highlight to the center of these flowers with a little bit of that warm white. Right on that yellow, I'm going to add just a few little dots of warm white just to make that center pop a little more and so that it doesn't look heavy. It needs to look airy and light. And so I'm going to put a little warm white in there. And I think Renee is loading up the wheel. <laughs> Is the wheel is loaded so now is the time if you haven't hit the the share buttons and the like buttons and the subscribe buttons and the follow buttons and you haven't said anything in the chat now's the time <laughs> so i'm going to dry this real quick and then we're going to talk about that lettering Now, I'm kind of obsessed. This lettering lends itself well to what I'm doing. You could do this with um, a zero rigger. You could paint this in. Um, it will work just fine. I'm kind of obsessed with the, the with these lately. These Posca pens and these point, these ones are a 07.7 millimeter. And I, these are just, they're a blast to use. And they're super simple. So you give them a good shake. And these are not a marker in the traditional sense. These are a paint pen. So you have to, just like your Americanas, if you haven't used them in a while, you've got to give them a good shake. And um, that's what you have to do with these Posca pens. And then I'm going to wipe this off because I seem to have made a, bit of a mess of it. There we go. Just so you can see it. So it looks like a Sharpie. It's got a tip similar to a Sharpie, but you're going to pump it up and down on your palette. 
like so to get that paint moving and then you can just use it like you would any sharpie but they are full of acrylic paint and I am just in love with these pens. They've just been so much fun. And the tips are really nice. They don't split, uh, unlike a typical felt tip pen. These, I'm not sure what the tip of these is made out of, but they don't split. They work very, very nicely and these ones I got from dickblick.com. And so if you live near a Dick Blick, if you've got one in your neighborhood, um, go and check it out. Don't forget them at Walmart. And yeah, you can get them at Walmart, some Walmarts. So they work really nicely and nice and opaque. I love the fact that the paint is really opaque. The only thing you have to remember is if you haven't used them in a while, um, just make sure to give them a good shake. The colors they come in are fantastic. This little set here is great. It's got eight different colors in it. The black, the white, all of your primaries are in there. So you can do almost anything with them. These will work on a variety of surfaces, fabric, uh, rocks. They're great for painting rocks. You can work on a smooth tile, on uh, canvas, and in this case over top of other acrylic paints. They work just great. Super fun. Tracy Craig. Mm. Uh, just got back from the emergency vet. <gasps> Had to help, help a third dog cross the bridge. Oh, Tracy, I'm so sorry. Oh no. It's so hard once was enough so I just noticed I forgot to put the stems on my berries and you guys are usually eagle-eyed so what happened <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of that margarita a little bit of warm white just to give it like I said you can go around and I like that soft squiggly line. It just gives everything a nice light look. So the only thing that I have left to do to this piece is perhaps adjust a couple of shadows. Um, and I see one or two that I would need to adjust a little bit. And pretty straightforward. This one back here for this flower. Just deepen it a little behind that bee scap. Um, and maybe in a couple of places here, just to deepen where they overlap some of the other flowers. And that's about it, I think. So I'll dry this and then I'm going to add the gel pen to the bee scap and we will be finished. There's just a lot of paint on that bee scap. I wanted to make sure it was good and dry before I did this. So the bee scap, um, just like everything else, when I hit it with this gel pen, I like to separate things. So I would go along, squiggly, just a squiggly line. Doesn't have to be zigzagged. I just like that squiggly line to separate those elements. Just adds a fun little detail to things and to outline the edges. So you can do this fairly quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And then I like to add little stitch lines because remember these bee skeps were woven. They were made out of straws and grasses. And so I want to kind of give them a stitched look to add a little extra texture. Just two little vertical hash marks basically here and there. And the only thing that I have left to do to this piece is to sign it. Now you can spatter this with a little bit of warm white if you choose. You can finish the edges with a gold paint pen if you choose. Um, I like to spatter. I have an obsession with spatter. Just a little one. 
a little bit just keeps everything nice and light and soft looking and then dry it and there you go puppy is talking <laughs> what's the matter uh-huh yeah so there you go kindness is as honey fun little piece to paint simple technique And you can put a bumblebee on almost anything and I'm going to paint it because I love my bumblebees. I love anything with that, that honey theme to it. So this one was a lot of fun for me to paint and I enjoy doing this type of flower. So it's just layers and layers of transparent color to get where you want to be. So I hope you had a lot of fun with this. I certainly did. I've painted it four times so far. <laughs> get, the wheel going. get the wheel going so we can give some prizes away. So today the goodies are, we've got a great little four stencil pack for you and some Tombow goodies and um, we've got some Dynasty brushes for you as well. So there's lots of fun stuff and we have three of those to give away today. Okay, first name. First name. <laughs> they can't really hear me, so. No, Renee's mic is not set up. Ken Ed Ed. Kenned. Ed. Ed Kenned. I'm not sure who that is. <laughs> but if you'd like to correct, collect your prize, please send me an email. Go to the website at tracymoreau.net. Click on the little speech bubble on the lower right hand corner of the screen and send us your shipping information so that we can get your goodies out to you as soon as possible. <laughs> And we got another one. Coming. <laughs> Cindy Monroe. Awesome. Cindy Monroe. With a y. Cindy with a Y. Um, somebody in the membership. <laughs> I am going to butcher that name. Are you? Kathy. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of vowels in there. There is. More than I'm used to. So Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> Kathy's a regular. So <laughs> I know that I've seen that name many, many times. Don't ask me to pronounce it because I will butcher it. So, um, Kathy, I think we have your shipping information. <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> I hope everybody enjoyed your piece today. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one. I really like the one on the 12-inch half circle. I just think it's such a pretty piece. And um, it has, of course, it has the full quote on it, which is, kindness is as honey, sweet to the human soul. So... I, I really like the quote and I really like this finished piece. The larger scale is, is quite effective. Uh, next weekend, we are painting that fun little sunflower piece. Of course, it's not within my reach <laughs> because why would I be that organized today? Uh, so yes, we're doing this. It's right there. <laughs> this? Yes. Good gravy. That's the one. That's good. No, I thought the bumblebee was part of it. No. So this is the piece that we're painting next weekend. Uh, this one is called Letters Home. I'm working on a series of these with different flowers uh, with a sort of a post office type theme or postage stamp type theme. Uh, this one is a lot of fun. It's simple. It's just a fun sunflower piece. Uh, you could hang it anywhere just for a punch of color. It's I love the surface and I love the sunflowers. So this is what we're painting next Saturday. And then the following Saturday, we're going to be doing the bluebells in the uh, the little tin cup, which another one that I really like. So come and join us right here, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Every Saturday we go live with uh, yet another fun little piece to paint. And uh, we're happy to have you join us every weekend. So thank you so much for the support. I'm glad to have you here. And um, what else? 
Anything else? No, I got nothing. You got nothing? Okay. <laughs> so come and join us next Saturday. Thanks for joining us today, everybody. Stay some enjoy the eclipse and everybody stay safe. Make sure you wear your glasses. Mwah. We love you. And pet, and pet your dog. dog. <laughs> pet your dog. <laughs>